Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph um, our system of inequalities. And there's a couple different ways we can do this. Here you have this in slope-intercept form. Here I have it in standard form. Now in standard form, we could either convert it back to slope-intercept form, or we can use the intercept method. And in this case, I'm going to use the intercept method because my um, c, or 24, is divisible by my a, b, or the coefficients of my x and my y. So remember, when graphing intercept form, um, I am going to write this as an equation here. Um, remember, when graphing intercept form, basically all we're doing is determining what the x and y intercepts are. And the x and intercept is when y equals 0. So I basically just put 0 in for y and then solve for x. That goes to 0, divide by negative 2. x is equal to negative 12. Then to determine the y intercept, I basically just put x in, or 0 in for x. So I have 3y minus 2 times 0 equals 24. That goes to 0. So I'm left with 3y is equal to 24. Divide by 3, y is equal to 8. Now notice, again, for both of these points, y equals 8, x equals 0. x equals negative 12, y equals 0. So I can go and plot these two points on my axis here. So again, when y equals 0, x equals negative 12. So I have my y-axis, x-axis. When y equals 0, that means I'm not going up or down at all, x equals negative 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Then the y-intercept is going to be the point where it crosses the y-axis. And that is when x equals 0, not going left or right, y is equal to 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So now I can connect these. But before I connect them, I want to go back to my inequality and determine, am I, is my boundary line going to be shade, shaded, or is it going to be dashed? And since this is less than or equal to, I'm going to have a solid line. OK. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and determine, um, yeah, let's go and determine the, the shading for this one before we get to the next one. So to determine the shading, we want to choose a test point. And the best test point I always like to choose is 0, 0, as long as my line does not go through it, which obviously my line does not go through 0, 0. So when testing my point, all I'm basically going to do is plug in 0 in for y or in for x, because this test point has the coordinates of 0, comma, 0. So I can just plug in 3 times 0 minus 2 times 0 is less than or equal to 24. Well, 3 times 0 is 0, minus 2 times 0 is 0. So 0 is less than or equal to 24, and that is true. Since that's true for a point that is below my boundary line, that means all points below my boundary line are going to be true. So instead of shading, I'm just going to show the direction of arrows where it's true, because I'm going to wait till I graph the other equation before I, can, before I spend time graphing everything. Um, the next thing I have y is greater or equal to 2 thirds x minus 1. And, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm just showing the, yeah, all right, whatever. Um, when I have y is 2 thirds, y is greater or equal to 2 thirds x minus 1, that line is going to be down to negative 1. OK? And so, the, oh, I'm sorry, I guess, I guess right here. So remember, when it's in slope-intercept form, that's my y-intercept, and that is my, um, that is my slope. Now remember, slope we can rewrite you know, as our rise over run. But basically, it's the change in y values over the change in x values between any two points. So from my y-intercept, where the graph crosses the y-axis, to find the next point, I have a change in y values that's positive 2. So I can go up 2, and a change in x values that's positive 3. So I can go over 3, 1, 2, 3. And again, for this value, um, you can see that uh, for this one, you can see this is going to be shaded as well, or a solid line, I'm sorry. Now, looking at the problem, these are supposed to be parallel lines because they have the same slope. I just didn't do that one in slope-intercept form. Um, but now, let's go ahead and you do the same thing for this test point. And again, since 0, 0 does not go on that point, I'm going to plug in 0, 0. So I plug a 0 in for y. It's less than or equal to 2 thirds times 0 minus 1. So therefore, I have 0 is greater than or equal to 2 thirds times 0 is 0 minus 1. Is 0 greater than or equal to negative 1? That is true. So since it's true now above my line, that means for this one, it's going to be true above. So therefore, my feasible hill region here that I have is going to be looked like that. 
So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you saw our graph, your systems of, of linear inequalities. Thanks.